I want to say hi to some folks uh, from, from really different parts of our country. It's kind of cool that we can all be uh, in all these different places and yet together. So out there in, in Wisconsin, uh, uh, Denise, good to see you, and uh, the Grunhagens uh, just from east of here, and Ellie and Dan out in Michigan, uh, the, the dual family, great to see you guys, and also Deb. Uh, I know it's it's Christmas. Everybody's getting ready. We we finally here in church got the uh, all the ornaments on the tree, uh, and so you have this list, don't you, of things uh, for almost every holiday, especially Christmas, that you have to do. And and what I was thinking about this past week is that you you probably have to put very little thought into what makes up that list, right? If I were to say, hey, what do you have to do to get ready for Christmas? Uh, you, I, I don't think it would take you a long time. You'd just be like, boom, 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 and you could just rattle them off because it's just in there. Now, you got the tree, you got the lights, you got all these things on your list, but I'd be willing to bet that you're not thinking, you know, it's not Christmas until I hear about John the Baptist. In fact, you could, just me saying that like that kind of comes out of left field. Like, John the Baptist, what does that have to do with, with lights on the tree or Christmas or presents or any of that stuff or eggnog or, or gingerbread houses? You know, John the Baptist, it's like, how does that fit? And yet every year, like, it's part of this, this story. It's part of, of, of preparing and getting ready for Jesus to arrive in our world. And so a bunch of years ago, I, I kind of made that statement really boldly, and somebody actually made me an, a Christmas ornament. Because I, I kind of thought, like, you'll never have a, a John the Baptist ornament, but there it is, right, up on the screen. Uh, somebody, just a good friend of ours, uh, made that, I, just like one of my most prized possessions. Uh, and it's, it's just awesome, as you can see, in all its glory. Uh, but John, John should get his own ornament because he is really the one who shows us what it looks like to get ready, to get ready for Jesus' arrival in our world, in our lives, in our hearts. And, and so let's look at what John had to say. Now, right as, as we turn to Mark chapter 1, grab your Bibles, let's, let's look at this. Along with John the Baptist, I would, I would think as part of our la- list of, of prep items, right, of things that we got to have uh, unless we don't have Christmas, uh, is, I mean, is, is, is like looking at your life, is that on the list? Like a moral inventory, whatever you want to call it, like, like just sitting down with God and saying, hey, what's happening Maybe there's some things about your life, some things in your heart that you know just don't belong. There's some attitudes that are there. Uh, maybe there's, there's a pattern that's starting to develop in, in how you live your life. And, and let me just tell you, like this time of the year can bring that all out. Uh, there, there's people that the Christmas cheer is just, you know, it's on 10. But, but for others, it's, it's, it's yet to get activated, right? That switch has, has yet to be flipped to where the joy and the peace and all of it's going to gonna just sort of exude from, their, from every pore of their body. And, it's, and for some, it may never. Especially this year, man. Like, what, what's going to happen? How, how is this Christmas thing going to look? And God's saying, look. It's, it's always a good time to prepare our hearts, right? To look at our hearts. Because you do that, right? You, you, if, if, let's say you got the list. Everybody's coming to Christmas dinner. And, and let me just tell you, it doesn't matter who you are. You're going to make sure the house looks awesome. You're, you're going to make sure that you've got the, the Christmas tablecloth. It's ironed. It's out there. You know, any, any stuff from last year, candle, uh, you know, or, or, you know, stains, whatever. All out of there. It's just going to look perfect centerpiece, maybe you break out the Christmas only uh, dishes and, and all that. And, and you just go, yeah, th- I want this to be perfect. And, and, but again, when it, when it comes to Jesus, are we doing that every day in our hearts, in our lives? Because he he's beyond special. He's beyond significant, isn't he? He's the one that bled and died. He's the one that saved us, the one that, that loves us more than anything. And, and, and what he says, not just on Christmas, it's, he's not like Santa, right, who just shows up once a year. It's every day. It's every moment. He's, he's right there with us in our lives, in our hearts, in our homes. And, 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 the, and the thing I want us to think about is 
I mean, how do we address that? Are we like, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter how I am. But I think it does. I think it, I think it matters because he goes into our hearts as dark as they are, as, as, as messy as things are, as, as bleak and, and hopeless as they often are. See, I, I think we should, we should just go all out in terms of our prep every day in terms of looking at our lives, in terms of saying, you know what, I, I don't want sin to be a part of my life. I don't want all these things to be a part of who I am. That, in fact, that's, that's not me. I, I've been, I, I, I'm his. He claimed me, right? He died for me. So, so here's how John the Baptist did it back in, in Mark chapter 1. We read that, that in, in fact, Mark starts his gospel by saying this is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not, not Mark's gospel. It's according to Mark, but, but it's about Jesus, the Son of God. In fact, he, he, he brings in John the Baptist because he's the one that was written about in Isaiah the prophet. The messenger that has been sent before your face. The one to prepare your way. He's the one out there in the wilderness crying out, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And it says that he appeared. He was baptizing in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He was saying, look, Jesus is here. The Messiah is here. The Savior, the one who we've been all hoping for, is here. And, 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 and don't think that, that your way of living is, 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 is going to do it. That's what repentance is. Repenting is saying, look, I have the wrong idea about this. I, I have my truth, not God's truth. That's what repentance is. It's saying, look, I, I'm going to literally have, well, like, I need God to change my mind and to, to remind me that I really need forgiveness. Remember how most uh, religious leaders especially greeted Jesus or treated Jesus when, when he would talk with them. Their response to what he was saying and, and the miracles that he was doing was like, you know what? We don't need forgiveness. We have all these religious systems. We have our way of doing things. We have our way of looking at the repentance says, yeah, th- no, you need the opposite. You need God. You need his love, his forgiveness. So that's what John is doing. He's out there in the countryside, and everybody's coming out to see him. The people of Judea and Jerusalem, they, they want to be baptized by him. And it says that they were confessing their sins. That's kind of what this is about. It's saying, Lord, you, you're right when you judge. Against you, I have failed. Against you, I have done what is wrong. I've done what's evil in your sight. That's the message John was saying. He's saying, look, God's got something better for you. God wants you to to know his love and his forgiveness. See, and even John's, like the way he looks, shows how he is waiting for that day. Look at at the description. Camel's hair, he's got a leather belt around his waist, he's eating locusts, wild honey, he's not all you know, fancy and, and everything else. He, he is, his whole life screams, this is about Jesus. In fact, when, when, when John first sees Jesus, there's that beautiful moment where he says, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the, the sins of the world. Could you imagine his whole life, it boils down to that moment. That's why he was born. That's why he exists. To say, there he is, the one we've been waiting for, the one who's going to save us and bring us the kingdom of God. He describes him in in verse 7. He says, look, after me is coming one who is mightier than I. The the straps of his sandals, I'm not even worthy to stoop down and untie. I I baptize you with water. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He's going to give you something I could never give you. Eternal life and hope and peace and forgiveness of all your sins. That's what Jesus comes to bring the Holy Spirit, and all of this power, right? And, 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 and that's just the way it's going to be. People confessing their sins and believing and, and, and God, you know, Jesus dying on the cross for them. That, that's what he's saying. This is what has, is happening. This is what's happening. So get ready. Like, why wouldn't we prepare our hearts? Why, why wouldn't we say, look, nothing else matters in our lives. See, very often I'll, 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 I'll stand up here and preach, or you'll hear a preacher and I'll say, you know, so I want you this week to take of some time and, and, and look at your life and, and look at who Jesus is and look at the love he's given to you. 
And I don't want to say that today. I don't want to say for you to take some time. I'm going to say, like, let, let it be what you do. Let it be your focus. The reason for doing all that you do, that he is, that, that you're waiting for his second coming. Like he's coming again. And, and that you're going to celebrate the fact that he came in all that humility. He came to, to serve us. He came to die for us. So every decision, every conversation, every, every action, every uh, choice co- coming out of that. See, because over and over again, we, we, we sometimes can get really kind of uh, tunnel vision when it comes to Christmas. See, but Christmas makes possible something even bigger if that's even possible. In fact, it, it just kind of adds to the glory of, of what Jesus is all about, right? So he's born, he suffers, he dies, he rises. We're, we're, we're given this forgiveness, but he gives a promise. He says, look, I'm coming back. I'm coming to take you home. Home, right? Sounds, sounds familiar. We're talking about home for Christmas. He's saying, look, I got, I got a forever home for you. And so as you're, as you're maybe trying to figure out what home for Christmas is going to look like, realize that he's got something that's even more amazing. And so we look at 2 Peter chapter 3. I want to finish up with this great passage because it's talking about the end of the world. And if you thought John the Baptist was not Christmassy, uh, the end of the world is very much not like on the top of people's Christmas lists. You know, you're, you're not going, all right, we're going to unwrap gifts and then we're going to talk about the end of time. No. I, I've yet to, to, to come across someone who, who, who kind of lays it out that way. And yet, over and over and over again, Scripture is saying that, that this is the reality. And so, just like you prepare a certain way for Christmas, we prepare a certain way, we live a certain way, knowing that he's coming. And I want to go to uh, verse 8. He says, don't overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, a thousand years is like a day. He's not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that you should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with this roar. The heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done in it will be exposed. So everything I'm like hanging on to and think is so incredibly important, he's like, it's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. And any perceived delay, any, any, anyone that would say, well, wait a second, when is he going to show up? Like, we're, we're done with all of this. It, it's for us. So that we would know him, so that we would repent, that we would say, yes, Jesus, you're the one. You're right. You're true. I, I want what you're going to give to me. So any delay is not a delay. It's given space for people to know him and to, and, to, and, to, and to hear from him. And so verse 11, he says, so, okay, so since this is going to happen, everything is going to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? No, notice it doesn't, say, it doesn't just say this is how you should live. He goes, no, this is who you should be. Like day in day out because you know what time it is right you know where this is all going and you know that 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 day is a is a is an awesome day where God comes to take you home so he says what 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 sort of people ought you to be in lives notice he almost answers his own question he says you 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 should live lives of holiness and godliness lives that are set apart lives that are unique there are this, this huge, huge desire to love God and to serve God. And what he's saying is, what is that going to look like in your life? Because you're, you're waiting, he says, you're waiting for it and you're hastening the coming of the day of God. Because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved and the heavenly bodies melt as they burn. But according to his promise, here's the good news, that we are waiting for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you're waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. And count the patience of the Lord as salvation. 
So what he's saying there is to focus on Jesus. To believe in him with all your heart, with all that you have. Because he's the only way that, that I would be found without any spot or blemish and at peace. Because without him, there isn't peace. Without him, there isn't a silent night. Without him, there is, there is no holiday cheer or joy to the world. It's only because the Lord has come, and, and honestly, because he will come again at the end of time. Because he loves us. He says, be diligent. So, so that, that's what matters. Like, that's what people see. Like, that's really what you care about. Is his love and what he has done for you. The fact that he has, think about that. We, we can now face God. And he's not going to go, ah, but what about that? Ah, uh-huh, what about that? Right? That's a spot. That's a blemish. No. He, he took all those. He, he died for all those. He paid the price for all those. They're gone. He doesn't, he doesn't see that anymore. He sees Jesus and his perfection. And, and that brings peace. You want to talk about Christmas, right, and peace on earth. You want to talk about the, the fullness of home for Christmas. God said, I'm going to come and take you to, to an eternal home. The home of righteousness, the home of, of everything that's, that's perfect. See, that's the gift that he gives to us today. And here's the cool thing. Is we get to enjoy that every day up until Christmas and beyond. But it's not like some Christmas gifts. You ever have those Christmas gifts where you know what you're getting? And then when you, when you get it on Christmas morning and you can actually, it's kind of official, you're like, oh, okay, it's great. I love it, but, you know, I've had it for like the next last couple weeks. Or I knew I had it. This is the gift. I think it just, it, it just keeps on like astounding us, right? It keeps on. Like making us go, wow, like it, it, it always feels like it's good. it can't get any better, but then it does. The gift can't be any more incredible, but then it is. Like I'm forgiven and I'm free, but then I get heaven and I get eternity. Wow. That's what I want us to be focusing on. And, and I want it at the top of the list and really alongside of everything in your list of, as you get ready. To celebrate his birth and to, and to look forward to his arrival again at the end of time, all right? In his name we pray, amen.